MS Config, or Microsoft System Configuration Utility, is used to determine what programs and services load when you start your computer, and how Windows starts. This great utility can be used to resolve issues with a slow computer, and Microsoft has even included a repository of the most useful tools to help you get your system back to a decent state of functionality. So how do we start Microsoft Configuration? Well, click on Start and type MS Config. When you see System Configuration pop up, hit Enter, and here you have the System Configuration Utility. There are five tabs that you will quickly delve into. The first is the General tab, which allows you to boot Windows into Diagnostic or Selective mode when necessary. The first option is Normal Startup, which loads all services and device drivers, which is the standard for your system, and this is what it would normally be set for. So if you're not troubleshooting, leave it at this. Your Diagnostic Startup loads basic device drivers and services only. This allows you to troubleshoot if there's a piece of software that's affecting your computer and preventing it from starting up. So this is by far the most used option in the General tab. And then of course you have Select a Startup where you can load up system services, startup items, or exclude them. And generally when you're troubleshooting you'd want to exclude these. So let's pop over to the second tab which is the Boot tab. And this is where you manage everything related to Windows Boot, including Safe Mode. If you have alternate operating systems such as Linux or maybe Windows 7, Windows 8, although why would you have Windows, Windows 8? This is where they'll be. The timeout over on the far right hand side here is where you set the default for how long you have to select the default or select another operating system before the default loads. So on the left at the bottom here you have your boot options. Safe Mode Minimal boots Windows GUI but only running critical services. Network functions are disabled, so if you find your system working at this level, you might want to try turning on services to see if they cause any additional issues. Safe mode, uh, mode Alternate Shell boots you to a command prompt. It'll keep the critical services running, but networking and the GUI are disabled. Following that is Active Directory Repair. Honestly, most people will never use this unless you're dealing with a server. I've used it once in my life, and I've dealt with servers for the past 30 years. So honestly, this is not a very well used option. Last on the list of safe mode options here is your network. So this allows you to boot the Windows GUI, running critical services, and networking. If you think your problem is the network servicing or network services, then by all means, leave this one turned off and it will help you troubleshoot it further. We have a few other options on this screen. No GUI boot does not display the Windows splash screen when you are booting. The boot log, this is really handy. So if you are intending to send some information to a technician to help you troubleshoot further, if you choose this option, it writes a file called mbtlog.txt in your system root or c colon backslash windows and most. Quite often, this file can contain really important information that can help troubleshoot. Base video option, this is just like VGA mode in times past. It allows you to bypass video drivers because I find video drivers quite often cause a lot of problems. The only thing is, just keep in mind, this will keep your screen at 640 by 480 resolution. So really low resolution. OS boot information shows all the drivers during the boot process as they load up, so you can have a good idea if something is failing on you. Your timeout settings, like I mentioned before, is just how long it takes to boot your default operating system. Be careful about this option, though. Make all boot settings permanent. If you click on these options, it will override your default boot option, and then you'll get, for example, you could get a boot without network or base video or some other option which you may not have wanted. Under advanced options, there are things in here such as selecting the number of processes, um, the maximum memory you want to load. Generally speaking, this screen you would usually leave alone because it's really advanced diagnostics to rule out memory or rule out processes that could be giving a problem and various things along that line. Under the services tab, I very often use this page. What I generally do here is I will hide all Microsoft services because the Microsoft services is your actual Windows and I want it to load up normally to see if it's the operating system or it's an additional piece of software that we've loaded that may be causing the issue. So I will usually disable all of these 
and reboot. If the system works, then I'll start re-enabling one at a time until I run into the problem. Then you've narrowed down which piece of software is causing the problem. But if, if you disable everything, just keep in mind, after you've finished troubleshooting, make sure you re-enable it, otherwise your regular software is not going to work. Second to last tab is the Startup tab. This option has now been moved to the Task Manager. So if you click on Task Manager here, it takes you to the Startup tab. Here are all the programs except for Windows, because obviously that's all separate, or Microsoft rather. So additional programs that you've loaded on your system, like antivirus software, mouse drivers, CCleaner, which I have loading, various other things. If you find these are slowing down your computer, as you can see, my last BIOS time was 8.3 seconds. You can certainly disable these, like just click on it to highlight, this is my mouse, you can disable it, and you'll see now it says disabled. Once you finish troubleshooting, make sure you come back in here and re-enable it. Alrighty, the last tab over here is the best tab if you don't know where things are in Windows. Keep in mind the one thing you need to remember is MS Config. Then come over to the Tools tab and you have a lot of different tools in this screen. The About Windows just shows you your Windows version, Change UAC settings, security and maintenance, Windows troubleshooting. I use this quite frequently actually. Once you highlight any one of these options in the screen, click on launch and here we go we have the windows troubleshooting that we can run to help system information this i do use a lot when i'm looking at computers to see if i have to get additional ram for the computer how much ram is installed if they're using virtual memory what's the make and model of the computer there's so much information in this screen that can really really help and assist you in your troubleshooting endeavor so as you can see, there's a lot of information within MS Config that can really help you. Hey, if you feel I've earned it, please subscribe, give this video a like, and leave me a comment down below. Thanks so much for watching, take care, and I will see you next time.